Welcome to University of Maryland's video on cardiopulmonary exercise testing interpretation. We will be outlining a simplified initial approach to interpretation of CPET. In this video, the following will be discussed. Indications of CPET, physiological changes during exercise, important parameters measured and calculated during CPET. We will also outline a strategy for interpretation and learn about cardiovascular and ventilatory limitation with examples. Some of the indications of cardiopulmonary exercise testing are assessment of unexplained dyspnea when initial tests are non-diagnostic, preoperative evaluation, assessment of exercise capacity and candidacy for heart transplantation in heart failure, exercise evaluation and prescription for pulmonary rehabilitation, and evaluation for impairment disability. Now we are going to discuss the physiological changes during exercise. Changes occur in three phases. When we start exercising in the first phase of aerobic respiration, oxygen consumption increases, carbon dioxide production increases proportionately and minute ventilation also increases proportionately to keep up with these changes. As a result, PaCO2 remains normal. When the anaerobic threshold is reached, anaerobic metabolism starts to supplement aerobic metabolism in energy production. Initially, the rise in lactate does not result in acidosis due to the buffering capacity of the body and the pH remains normal. This is the phase of isocapnic buffering. At this stage, there are two sources of carbon dioxide production, one from the exercising muscles and the other from buffering of H plus ions from lactate by bicarbonate. Hence, the carbon dioxide production increases out of proportion to oxygen consumption. To compensate for this, the minute ventilation also increases out of proportion to oxygen consumption. It is important to note the minute ventilation is still proportionate to the carbon dioxide production. As the lactate continues to rise, the buffering capacity is overwhelmed. As a result, in the third phase, metabolic acidosis sets in. This forces the person to stop exercising. In this phase, oxygen consumption continues to rise. The carbon dioxide production continues to rise out of proportion to oxygen consumption due to buffering of lactate. What happens to the minute ventilation? Now there are two reasons driving an increase in minute ventilation. An increase in carbon dioxide production and the body trying to compensate for metabolic acidosis. As a result, the increase in minute ventilation is steeper. It is out of proportion to oxygen consumption and carbon dioxide production. This results in a decrease in PaCO2. We use N-tidal carbon dioxide as a non-invasive surrogate for PaCO2. When ETCO2 starts decreasing, it signifies the presence of metabolic acidosis. Note that the carbon dioxide production and minute ventilation start increasing out of proportion to oxygen consumption at the anaerobic threshold. When minute ventilation starts increasing out of proportion to carbon dioxide production, it signifies the beginning of the third phase of metabolic acidosis. Respiratory exchange ratio or RER or R is the ratio between carbon dioxide production and oxygen consumption. When exercise continues beyond the anaerobic threshold, carbon dioxide production increases out of proportion to oxygen consumption due to buffering of lactate. Hence, RER increases. During CPET, these parameters are measured at the level of the mouth. If they are measured at the level of the tissue, this ratio is called respiratory quotient or RQ. Oxygen consumption is an important parameter used in the interpretation of CPAT. Let's take a look at how this is measured. It is the difference between the oxygen taken in during inspiration and the oxygen breathed out. The total amount of oxygen in a minute is the product of minute ventilation and fractional concentration of oxygen in the inspired gas. The total amount of oxygen expired is a product of the mixed expired oxygen concentration and minute ventilation. FiO2 and FeO2 can be easily measured with a gas analyzer at the mouth. 
In this way, V.O2 is calculated from minute ventilation, FiO2 and FeO2. V.O2 or oxygen consumption is expressed as liters per minute or milliliters per minute or can be adjusted for weight and be expressed as milliliters per kg per minute. We monitor the V.O2 throughout the test and determine the peak V.O2 value. Similarly, we can calculate carbon dioxide production from FiCO2, which is usually negligible, FeCO2 and minute ventilation. It is important to note FeCO2 is not the same as end tidal carbon dioxide. FeCO2 is the concentration of carbon dioxide in the total expired gas, whereas end tidal carbon dioxide concentration is measured at the end of expiration. The other variables monitored during CPET are heart rate, blood pressure, electrocardiogram, pulse oximetry, and end tidal carbon dioxide. When we interpret a cardiopulmonary exercise test, we ask ourselves two questions. Is the peak V.O2 normal? In other words, did this patient reach an expected peak V.O2 value? The normal values are greater than 84% predicted or greater than 25 mLs per kg per minute. If it is abnormal, what is the reason? Is it a cardiovascular limitation or a ventilatory limitation? There are other causes of exercise limitation, but in this video, we will talk only about these two causes. Although numerous variables are measured and calculated during CPAT, we are going to use the following five variables to determine whether the cause of exercise limitation is cardiac or ventilatory. A combination of heart rate reaching the maximum limit, respiratory exchange ratio increasing above 1.15, or end tidal carbon dioxide starting to decrease, is indicative of cardiovascular etiology. If the patient stopped exercising because minute ventilation reached its limit, the etiology is ventilatory. If the patient desaturates by greater than 5%, causing him to stop, hypoxemia evaluation is required, the cause of which can be cardiac or respiratory. Normally, we stop exercising after reaching an expected peak V.O2 because of cardiovascular limitation. A limitation of ventilation is always abnormal. Let's take a look at this example. Is the peak V.O2 normal? It is 15.8 milliliters per kg per minute and is abnormally decreased. Now we have to diagnose the reason for exercise limitation with the help of five variables. We will start with minute ventilation. Did the minute ventilation reach the maximum limit? The predicted maximum of minute ventilation can be calculated by multiplying FeV1 by 40. If the minute ventilation reaches greater than 75% predicted maximum, the cause of exercise limitation is ventilatory. In this case, minute ventilation reached 52% predicted maximum. Hence, the cause of exercise limitation is not ventilatory. Next, we look at the SpO2. Is there a drop by greater than 5%? Not in this case. Thus, hypoxemia is not the reason the patient stopped exercising. Heart rate is the next important variable. We look at the patient's maximum heart rate and the predicted maximum heart rate. The difference between the two is called heart rate reserve. Heart rate is said to have reached its limit if heart rate reserve is less than 15 beats per minute. In this case, the heart rate did reach its maximum limit. Next, we analyze the respiratory exchange ratio. If it increased more than 1.15, it shows the patient exercised beyond the anaerobic threshold and stopped. In this case, RER did increase above 1.15. Metabolic acidosis prevents one from continuing exercise. Did metabolic acidosis develop too soon in this patient? The ETCO2, which is used as a surrogate for PaCO2, helps us make this determination. In this graph, partial pressure of end tidal carbon dioxide is plotted in the y-axis. In this case, the ETCO2 did start decreasing, again indicating the exercise limitation is cardiovascular. Now, putting it all together, 
why is the peak V.O2 abnormal in this case? The SpO2 did not decrease by greater than 5%. The minute ventilation did not reach the maximum limit. Heart rate did reach its maximum limit. Respiratory exchange ratio increased above 1.15. And the end tidal carbon dioxide did start decreasing. Thus, the cause of exercise limitation is cardiovascular. Let's take a look at another example. In this case, V.O2 is 8.8 .8 milliliters per kg per minute and is abnormally decreased. Minute ventilation reached the maximum limit. It was 90.9% predicted maximum. Next, we look at the SpO2. Is there a drop by greater than 5%? Not in this case. Is the heart rate reserve less than 15 beats per minute? No. The heart rate reserve in this case was 51 beats per minute. The respiratory exchange ratio did not increase above 1.15 and the end tidal carbon dioxide did not start decreasing. Thus, why was the peak V.O2 abnormal in this case? It was not because metabolic acidosis had started. It was not because the respiratory exchange ratio increased above 1.15. And it was not because the heart rate reached the maximum limit. Minute ventilation did reach the maximum limit. The SpO2 did not decrease by greater than 5%. Hence, the cause of exercise limitation is ventilatory. In this video, we learnt about two patterns of abnormalities. Hope this video helps in demystifying the concepts behind cardiopulmonary exercise testing. Thank you.